we talk about North Minneapolis, highest crime rate in the state of Minnesota, 70% of the families headed by single parents, widest racial employment gap in the country, 68% of the families in North Minneapolis are on some type of government assistance. In Minneapolis, it's probably the, the lowest academic achievement around the, the whole state. Harvest Prep and Best Academy has the highest concentration of African-American boys of any educational or any institution in the state of Minnesota. The only ones competing for more enrollment is the prison system. We're actually trying to put the prisons out, out of business. This is actually the brainchild of my wife, Dr. Ella Mahmoud, started in our home in uh, 1985 and started with the idea that she wanted to create a program that gives our children a very solid educational foundation. So we started with 10 children, then we evolved quickly from a preschool program to an elementary program, and today we serve over 1,200 children in six different programs. When you look at our children in comparison to all North Minneapolis schools, we're significantly achieving at higher rates than all of the schools in North Minneapolis and Minneapolis in general. And what that shows is we're serving the exact same children as these other schools are serving. So it's a clear indication that there's not a hardware problem here. It has nothing to do with their genetics, has nothing to do with their capacity to learn. There's a software problem. It has everything to do with the program that we're giving them. Either we can program our children for success or we can program them for failure. Ask questions that start with why. As the chair of the education committee, it's wonderful for me to look in, peer in, and see what's happening in so many schools and see the greatness that's going on here with the faculty, with the administrators, and most importantly, with the students. What we were able to do is to distill the achievement gap into five areas. First of all, there's a preparation gap. Many of our children come to school behind, even before they start kindergarten, sometimes years behind their more well-off counterparts. Then there's a time gap because many of our children come to school behind, the only way we're going to catch them up is to give them more time and support. Then there's the teaching gap. Great teachers make a significant difference. So we have to have the best teachers in the most needed areas. Then you have the leadership gap. The leader is the glue that holds the systems, the structures, and the culture together so that we ensure not just success in one classroom, but in many classrooms and throughout the district. And then lastly, I think the widest gap is the belief gap. And that's the idea that if you don't believe that you can achieve, if parents don't believe in their children, if the teachers don't believe in the children, and if the children don't believe in themselves, then it's very difficult for them to be successful. What does the L stand for? We're willing to do whatever is necessary. We're willing to move whoever is necessary. If they do bad on a test, it's my fault. Because if you came, if you put forth 100% effort, if you did everything I asked you to do, then you'll do well. If not, it's on me. We expect our teachers to be hardworking. We expect them to be open to feedback. And we expect them to give our students 100%. So it almost becomes a self-selection uh, process because not too many people want this type of rigor. The old school that I was at, they was like at a lower standard and it was too easy. Like this school has a higher standard and it's challenging and it puts you right in your spot. And like, if you can dream it, you can do it. You can have data, you can have plans, you can have all that, but ultimately you have to execute on those. Dates, names, actions, actions. Data is critical to the whole education process. And because we have an expanded school day, an expanded school year, we can not only take the data, and, and look at the data, we have enough time to turn that data around in favor of the children. We believe by changing the situation, changing children's academic achievement, we can make a difference in their economic dependency and pull them out of poverty. I really like my teachers because they don't give up on you. you 
When I walk in the door, I love every subject that I do, but I mostly like math. It makes me feel like that I have some power. I have a chance to become something. This school lays the foundation for the students. It gives them confidence. Frankly, it opens all doors to any future that the students want. It's all before them. It's really quite exciting. It shows what's possible. Receiving the Minnesota Futures Award is really a demonstration of what's possible. As I said before, that it's not a hardware problem, it's a software problem. And if we can really demonstrate that our school can do it in the heart of North Minneapolis, then clearly anybody can do it. We'll